The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. These Best You Expo Talks are recorded in front of a live audience in a live event. We highly recommend that you focus on the message. As they say, what you focus on expands. Enjoy. Kyle Cease. After 25 years of achieving what he thought were his dreams of being a headlining comedian and actor, Kyle Cease decided to quit his stand-up career at his peak. He became a transformational comedian and a New York Times bestseller author, bringing his one-of-a-kind self-help wisdom to sold-out audiences. Blending comedy with his personal evolution, Cease has been a guest speaker at thousands of summits and conferences and has spoken and renowned teachers, including Eckhart Tolle, Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra. Cease has made more than 100 different TV and movie appearances, including 10 Things I Hate About You, Not Another Teen Movie, and Jimmy Kimmel Live. He has two number one Comedy Central specials to his credit, and in 2009, Cease earned the number one ranking on Comedy Central stand-up showdown. Kyle is obviously a phenomenal character, tremendously charismatic. Uh, he did give us a good old roast at the Best You Expo, and he spoke there a couple of years ago. Uh, he's just a breath of fresh air, really. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy and love his talk. Thank you so much. So what's going on right now? First of all, what's going on is I'm talking about what I'm feeling. Because you, you have to say what you're feeling. And nobody says what they feel anymore. Everyone just goes into a place of denial and says not what they're feeling, but what they think people want to hear. But if you go on stage and there's noise coming out or there's people talking, what happens if you say the thing you're feeling? The people in the room go, or in the curtains go, I know what that feels like, and I can connect with you. And there is this new barrage of speakers that don't say what they're feeling. They just say, do you want to learn this, or do you want to get this, or I'm going to give you the seven steps to nine more steps, get my books, 10,000 ways to simplicity. And I'm like, that's not simple. And some of the things we're doing is because we're chasing this BS thing that doesn't exist. There's this belief that you're going to be happy when something happens. That's the big belief we leave in. When something happens, I'll be happy. And I think that's absolute crap. I believe it's when I'm happy, things will happen. And by happy, thank you, both of you. And by happy, what I mean is when I'm happy with every part of myself, when I'm happy with my sadness, when I'm happy with my darkness, in the 80s, there was a paradigm shift when I think people started believing that who they were was what they achieved, and people achieved amazing things, and now there's enough people out there that have achieved so many things and are still not happy, so it totally turns out that that has nothing to do with your happiness. So what I believe first is let's just get okay with everything we feel right now. And so what I have to do is talk about what's going on and meet you at it because you're people. You're not an audience. You're people. You're actually one person multiple times. And my job is to talk to you like you're one person, like you're my best friend, because it's very condescending if I were to come out here and talk to you like you're a group of people and be like, hi, I'm going to tell you about, imagine if someone came into your house and just talked to you alone like that. That would be crazy if a guy walked in your house like, hi, <laughs> well, today we're going to learn. You'd be like, get out of my house. It's illegal for you to be in it. So... What I have to do is talk to you like you're one person because that's how we talk to people. And that's how you'll hear me. So my first job was to talk about that and then to say what's coming up. Because the second I tell you what I'm feeling and I know we're connected, then more stuff starts to show up. More things start to come. I have no idea what I'm going to say for the next hour. And I love that. If I knew what I was going to say, as I said in the video, you would not be hearing my heart. You'd be hearing something that I scripted because I only would script something because I believe there's a right or wrong way to do something. And what, how do I measure right or wrong? Did I get something from you? In other words, when we're trying to do something right, we're trying to get something from someone. Are you with me so far? 
And if you're trying to get something, you're saying to yourself, I'm in lack without this thing. Are you with me so far? So every time you do something and you're trying to get something from someone else, you're already starting off from a creative place of lack and saying, I'm not enough. So if you go to a job interview and you think, I hope I get this job interview, you're immediately going into a place of lack because you think that that job interview is bigger than you. If you do that on a date, if you do that with, the, uh, with an audience, if you do that with a sale, with a client, you're already lying to yourself the second you think I'm incomplete without this thing. Because I'm going to be in lack and I'm going to create from lack. And our job is to go past that BS lie and go to a place of understanding that we are whole as is. That we're enough right now. And people go, how do I do that? The first answer is love the part of you that asked how I do that. Because who's trying to do it? Some ego thing is going, when I do that, I'll be happy. So what I'm supposed to do is, first of all, just connect and say what I'm feeling, and then also notice how many things you're doing because you don't understand that under it is a belief that you could just be okay with. So for instance, some people go, I don't know what's going to happen. The underlying belief is that I should know what's going to happen. But how much freer would you be if we just fell in love with not knowing? How much better would this talk be if we had no idea what was going to happen and we loved it? How much more free would you be? What if instead of saying, I got to do this thing, what if you instead loved the fear of what's under it? There are so many people trying to make money because they have a fear of being broke. And if that's why you're trying to make money, then you're creating from a place of lack. If you really want to make money, love being broke. Love being broke. If you really want to have a good relationship, love being single. I don't mean, I don't mean love it like you're going to try to be there. I mean love all of it because it's just a thought that's coming up in you. If you want to have a good life, this is going to sound dark and I'm saying it way too early in the day, but love death. I don't mean love death like be morbid. I don't mean love death like aim for it, but it's inevitability. So why don't we stop running from it all day and then not living? What if you just go, yeah, it's part of life. Got it. And then you say, I love that. What happens? Freedom happens. Do you feel the freedom under that? I'm not saying it like let's all be dangerous or or be dark. I'm saying what happens if you love the idea of totally being broke? What happens if I love the idea that this crowd is totally scattered? How much better am I on stage than if I'm like, oh no, they got to be a certain way. I got to have them all sitting this way. I got to have walls. What if I had a rule that I have to have walls? All of a sudden, I'd be in rejection of this thing. What if I went on stage and thought, I hope I don't screw this up? How much weaker would I be than I hope I screw this up? Are you with me? What if you start everything totally in love with the idea that you could screw it up? What if you went into a job interview and were like, I hope I screw this up. All of a sudden, you're in charge of your life. And weirdly, you make space to love all those parts of you that you didn't love. And then weirdly, I promise you on my life, life will mirror your connection to yourself. It really does. I don't mean it in a, in a weird, airy, fairy way. I don't mean make a vision board. I don't mean like that. I mean, when you actually love every part of yourself, just think about it. You're connected to yourself and someone comes up to you and they're totally a people pleaser. You can feel it. So you immediately might say, thank you, but no, thank you. You can feel when someone's trying to get from you. But if you're connected to yourself, you will pass on it. And then you'll make room to only align with other people who are in that same space, right? So immediately you create room where you go, what feels heavy and let go of it versus catering to being around what feels heavy. What feels light and expansive? Ask yourself right now, what feels light to me? What are things in my life that I don't know what it is about it, but they expand my life? And I don't mean like a big vision of a big money thing. I mean, things in your life right now, like nature, meditation, self-connection, painting, drawing a book, whatever. What is, what's some things that come up for you? What's that? A dog? And who was over here? Dog? Awesome. 
Isn't that great? We all are, our dogs are, isn't it kind of sad? Like we're all here figuring out we love our dogs while they're at home alone right now. Oh yeah, you love me a ton. You're in an airplane hangar doing a talk right now. Music. Now, what if these things that you're saying were actually access points to you having a much more successful company? Because these are things that raise your vibration. They raise your ideas. The second you start to be around things that expand your body, you go more into your heart. And you know what your heart can do that your mind can't do? Your heart can do things that your mind simultaneously thinks there's only one way or another. Your heart can do both of them. So to give you an example, when you're in your head, you go, if I go into a relationship, sometimes I feel connection, but not freedom. And when you leave the relationship, you feel freedom, but not connection. When you're in your heart, you feel both at the same time. When you're in your head, you go, should I get a bunch of stuff done today or should I relax? When you're in your heart, you go, the more I relax, the more that gets done. In fact, the more that I chill, the faster the ideas come in that give me these really big paradigm busting things. You wouldn't know it from here, but we're about to sell out the Dolby Theater, the Dolby Theater where the Oscars are held. We're doing an event that's 3,400 seats. And so I don't know why I took this, but we're doing an event. It's, I'm kidding in a not at all way, but we're doing an event. It's 3,400 seats. And what happened? How did we get there? By asking myself, not how do I get this, but what would I have to become to where it's not exciting that that's happening, but normal? You want to get to a place where it's normal for amazing things to come into your life by unhooking from everything that is not amazing. This is actual teeth and actual scary stuff. But what also is in your life right now that you know feels heavy? What's the thing that I'm saying that about? And you're like, I know what it is. It might be a job that you don't like. It might be a friend that doesn't align. It might be that the attic is full of tons and tons of crap that you don't want anymore, but you still feel like you should keep because you inherited it from someone that was in World War II. So you need to carry this stuff with you and you have these mental reasons. Here's a rule that I have that's changed my life dramatically. If I can justify why I should keep it in my life, I have to let it go. Check that out. I'm engaged to an amazing woman. We have a baby. You'll never hear me explain to anyone why I'm with her. You'll never hear me say, well, she gets good medical, so it's good that I'm with her. Are you with me? You never hear me say that thing. Why? Because it's my highest alignment. You never hear me say, in fact, (laughs) on this stage, I was like, well, I'll get to announce the Dolby. So... (laughs) but with so many things you would never ever say certain things about certain people in your life certain friends my team is here dan and carrie are here these people co-create evolving out loud i will never say a reason why i'm with them because it's in my body that i love to do what i do and co-create with them the only time you explain to yourself why you keep something in your life That's because you need a mental explanation of why you ignored your body, why you ignored your heart. If if you guys leave with this information, this will be the most insane experience of your life. But think of how many things you keep in your life and explain to yourself why you keep it in your life. Like I had a poster from when I did Comedy Central. I had a big Comedy Central special in 2006. I had this huge frame poster and it was so exciting to me. And I felt this thing in my body and it said, get rid of it. But my mind said, yeah, but one day my daughter will need to see it. But my body said, get rid of it. But my mind said, yeah, but one day my daughter will want to see it. And then my body, without even explaining this to me, taught me after I got rid of it, that my daughter would much rather have a present father than someone who's bragging about accomplishments he made way long ago. Do you get what I'm saying? And I couldn't measure that. Thank you, both of you. So I couldn't measure that. I can't measure that. So here's why we're scared when we let go of something. When we let go of something heavy, we're horrified. And that's because your mind is the one that can see only what you will lose, but not what you will gain. When you let go of something, your mind can measure what you will lose, but it will never measure what you will gain. I am not here to just talk about how much potential you have and get you rah-rah excited. I actually want to shift the planet. 
And I want to shift it with people that actually don't want to just take a bunch of courses and hear a bunch of content and then hear it and then become addicted to getting more content and become addicted to getting more content and using that to feel really good about yourself and why you're actually still not living your life. Because under that shit is real content that's trying to come into your life. Real content's trying to show up that's your breakthrough for real. You hear speakers say that all day and you go, ah, that's nice. And then you go home and live the same way. What in your life actually feels heavy? Let's actually do something. How much content are we just collecting and feeling really good and reading a million books, but not actually doing the work? Like that actually scared her. She has diarrhea. This is a (laughs) thing about letting go. Because here's what we don't get. I don't even believe in motivation. I believe that you're like a helium balloon and it's always trying to go up but there's a string coming off and it's hooked on something that doesn't matter. You know what it's hooked on? Stuff that you can't control, but for some reason addictively try to control all day. Like what Trump said, right? I just saw a bunch of people go, ugh, when I said that. Why are we addicted to trying to control what we can't control? I'm not saying that it's good he's there. I'm not saying it's bad he's there. I'm saying here we are pacing in our house going, ah, Trump, or here's, oh, Hillary, ah, I'm mad about that person now. And we're trying to control something we can't control. What else? Our past, you can't control your past, but you can control if you're okay with it. What other people think about you, you can't control it, but you can control if you love what they think about you, no matter what it is. So why are we so addicted to trying to control what other people think of us when that's something we can't control? Because we love to control, we love to find control somewhere. And, but we're so scared to actually shift that we addictively look for things that we deep down know that we can't do anything about so that we feel in our mind, like we're getting something done when nothing's actually changing. Because there's also a ton of stuff you can control that you haven't. You can control if you're going to react to that. You can control if you're gonna create or protest or speak or become one of the most insane, powerful people in the world because you're a helium balloon that's trying to go up, but the string is caught on what people think of you. The string is caught on what someone said a week ago. Who cares? Watch that addiction. And then when it shows up, fall in love with it oh, I have this addiction to controlling what other people think, and I love that. It won't stay there if you love it. Are you with me? Are you guys with me on this? This is so big because I don't want to just get you to a seven-figure business. I don't want to get you into the ultimate relationship. I want you to catch that you have a Gandhi or an Oprah inside of you and stop just trying to become successful. Access that part of you that actually is the world changer. It's really actually bizarrely easy. It's just scary to the ego. It's scary to your old story. It's, it's so much harder to me to live the way most people live, totally against the grain all day, fighting themselves, being at war with what is all day, because there's this other part of you that could just let go of that, let go of that, let go of that. And then weirdly, you let go of the stuff. You're scared because you can measure what you lose. You can't see what you'll gain. You let go of it. And then boom, an insight shows up, a multi-million dollar insight that's just a tweet or make that video really quick. This is how we create everything on our team. My team and I, every single thing we do, it's just literally only, does it feel good in my body? That's it. I don't care. We've had clients that offered us so much money, but they didn't feel good. And I, we said, no, that's our measuring stick. Does our body feel it? Can you justify keeping it? Well, that person's really heavy, but they're offering us a ton of money. Yeah, that's the justification. That's me saying, I don't care what my body says. I don't care what my instincts say. Money is more important to me than this. The second you say that, you are saying your soul doesn't matter. And you're doing shit to make other people happy. And what you don't even know is your soul totally is able to make you way more money. And weirdly, the more you're in your soul, the less addictions you have to spend the money on. You don't have to have the biggest house so that you can show off to other people. You don't have to have the most expensive car. You don't have to have, look at me, everybody. You don't have to be watching Netflix all day. You know why you have to do that stuff? Social media, Netflix all day? Because you're so out of alignment with yourself that your head is so habitually in the past and the future 
but those things get you into the moment for a second. That's what an addiction does. It gets you into the moment. But the more you let go of the things that put you in the past and the future in the first place, the more you are the moment. And when you are the moment, an addiction feels like a contrast. So the second you let go of heavy stuff, all of a sudden you save a ton of money too. And people are scared to let go of the heavy stuff because they're scared it'll cost them money. Yet they're spending so much more money just trying to keep their, their soul at all happy temporarily in this weird way because they're out of alignment with their soul. And I'm talking to you from a place that I want you to feel is real for you because I know for a fact, and I've worked for years and years and years with people now, that they are an infinite source. And when they finally decide to receive how much love that I have for them, they end up actually moving like they're Gandhi or Oprah or Eckhart Tolle or Wayne Dyer. I don't want a bunch of followers. I have a baby and I want her to live on a safe planet. So I'm looking for a bunch of co-leaders who run their own life and learn how to live in here and don't just find the right speaker to follow. I want you to access you because I promise you it's there and I can see your mind kicking. I can see it. I can feel you receiving it and I see the minds going, yeah, but you feel that? Feel that. That's what happens every time something exciting happens. Oh, this is fun. Okay, every time something exciting happens. Every time something exciting happens, something expansive, two of you show up. Your body says, I would love to do this. And then your mind goes, yeah, but, right? Can you feel that? Am I accessing even that in you right now? Do you feel the split in your bodies at all? Do you feel that your body's like excited? Like, what if I did just go on that trip? Or what if I did ask that person out? Or what if I left this company? And then your mind goes, yeah, but money. Yeah, but I have a kid. Yeah, but I can't because my spouse won't like it. Yeah, but whatever. Got it. What if these are the reason you have to? What if these aren't the reason you can't, but they're the reason you have to? I'd love to go write a book in Italy, Kyle, but I have to make money. Yeah, you're not making any money because you're not writing the damn book. Yeah, I'd love to go just live my life, Kyle, but I have a kid. All the more reason to live your life and show your kid that they can do the same thing. Do not stifle your gift and tell your kid that they can do it because they're going to learn based on what you do, not what you say. Your actions are their teacher, not the teaching. They'll, they'll just learn, live in your lie and tell my kids that they can do it. That's what they'll learn. So when you feel that split come up, love it and know this that when you feel that split, one side of you gets excited and you can feel it in your body and one side of you gets scared. And here's how it works. If you honor this fear, the opportunity goes away. And if you honor the opportunity, the fear goes away. Because the second you say yes to the holy shit leap here, this fear suddenly leaves because you're on a new channel where you don't even know about that problem you're immediately suddenly, in other words, think of if you jumped in the water over your head, you'd be horrified of how much you might not be able to swim, right? But once you're in there, you're not thinking, I might not be, you're swimming, you're figuring it out. You're figuring it out because now you're in the energy of that. And you'd much rather learn how to swim from the middle of the ocean than the shore. (laughs) That was cool. Sometimes stuff just comes through and I'm like, oh, get it on a Facebook meme immediately. Show some, I want to see a ton of Facebook memes of people doing this to the ocean topless and it says that sentence. So, because that's how you know you're spiritual is when you're posing naked towards an ocean. Like, when you enter this field, every other Facebook friend of mine is topless like this to the ocean or at the top of a mountain. I don't know what the f- faces of any of my friends look like anymore. I just know that you aren't free unless the ocean sees your boobs. That's my MySpace slogan. (laughs) So all this content is coming up. And do you hear it? And do you feel that I'm getting more excited? Do you feel that alignment? Are you getting more excited? Now you'd think that I'd run out of content, but I'm not writing from my mind. My heart's talking and I'm hearing the advice as I'm saying it. So I'm applying it while I'm saying it to you, like I'm actually thinking of the things that are true for me that I need to let go of because I'm not doing this talking. I'm just out of the way of myself. Literally by purging 80% of the crap out of our house, by letting go of so many things that we think we need and then moving into a much smaller house this year, 
by, by letting go of the people in my life that felt heavy. There's love for them. I have love for them, but feeling that I energetically have to pull them up while they're trying to pull me off a cliff, finally going, no more. Do you get what I'm saying? There's people that you know feel heavy and we can still love them. I mean, energetically heavy, where when you're done talking to them, you go home and your whole day is trying to figure out what to do about them. You know what I'm talking about? So you're not even making room for innovation. It's costing you money to be with people that are heavy out of that alignment. And you're giving them the best gift when you let go of them because they finally get a minute to free themselves and connect and not be enabled by your over empathetic help that they weren't really asking for from their soul, but their ego was asking for. This is huge. The more I let go of that, the faster the content comes through. The longer I go in my creativity, the faster the content comes through. So one thing I want you to get is this. When you do something creative, show up and stay in the room. Stay in the room. Who here meditates at all? Raise your hand. Who here meditates an hour a day? Raise your hand. Who here meditates two hours a day? Raise your hand. Wow, really? That's amazing. So that's awesome. So who here meditates and goes a few minutes in and goes, this isn't working and leaves? Who does that? Raise your hand if that's kind of you or that feels familiar. How about with creating? Like you want to write your book or you want to write a song or you want to do something creative. You go a few minutes and you go, okay, this isn't working. Screw it. And you leave. Some people do that. Awesome. What happens if you stay in the room? I'm contractually obligated to stay on the stage. Actually, I'm not, but I'm obligated to stay on the stage for an hour. And you're here, so it forces me to stay in the room with you. But when we meditate, we don't sometimes have someone across from us to be with us while we do the work. Are you with me so far? So we go into a meditation, and all these thoughts show up, and then we go, this isn't working because it's just chaos in here. That's why it's working, So many people say, I'd love to meditate, but my mind's too chaotic. I'm like, that's the greatest reason to meditate. That's like saying, I'd love to work out, but I'm too chubby. Like, (laughs) I'll wait till I'm fit and then get on the treadmill. No, that's not how it works. And this is my meditation. This is what I do. I wake up, I sit up in the bed. I go pee first, sit up in the bed. And then I just sit there. I don't do anything with my focus. I don't do anything with like trying to hum. I don't wear a bunch of beads. I don't change my name to Rainbow Baca Sunshine. I don't stop shaving my armpits. I keep shaving my armpits. But what I do, (laughs) I don't need a bunch of beads. I don't do anything. I sit and I breathe and all these thoughts show up. I'll, I'll set my alarm for two hours sometimes. And then I'll put it on airplane mode. And then the alarm The alarm's set, and I sit there, and I hear these thoughts show up and go, two hours? You can't do this for two hours. Who's talking here? That's not you, right? That's a thought. And so I just sit there and love it. And then another thought comes in. This is ridiculous. Then it goes, I got all those people I got to call, and I love that. Then it goes, I should do this thing, and then I love that. Every time I'm about to meditate, I think I'd love to meditate, but I got to call this person, this person, this person. Then I meditate and go, I totally don't have to call those people. Because sometimes the old story that you think you are is doing things so that you can keep your old story alive. So you're keeping stories and people in your life that don't actually call to your soul. They're just obligations. And the more you meditate and connect to your heart, you start doing what you want versus what you think you have to do. And then the ego goes, well, I'd love to do that, but I got to make money. There is so much more money over here. There's so much more money in you actually trusting and co-creating with the universe by showing it that you trust it and moving into your body and going what feels light and expands me and that feels heavy, let go of it. This is big. Are you guys with me? My dream is for just 10% of this audience or any audience I do to access that Martin Luther King part of you. Because I always think to myself, what would happen if a thousand Martin Luther Kings showed up at the same time? You see the movement that could happen, the Gandhis, the, the Mother Teresas that you have in you, the Mr. Rogers in you, that thing in you, that Elvis in you. You know, I was doing a talk for entrepreneurs recently, and they asked me if I ever pass out comment cards. Do you ever get like feedback forms signed? And I was picturing, do you think Elvis would do that? 
Do you think Elvis would be like, I'm glad you like that concert. We're going to pass out some forms. Why don't you let us know what you thought about it. Was my performance good? What songs should I do differently at the next concert? How can we make your Elvis experience better? Should I do a little more with my hips? That'd be ridiculous. The greatest in the world aren't asking feedback. There's a you there that's so crazy good. You don't have to show people the celebrities you know. You don't have to show people that you're this person that knew this or did this. You don't have to brag about all these external things because you'll only get fans that are starstruck and not actually interested in shifting the planet. Anyone that can see through that is going to be heavy eventually. So you want to access you and actually shift the world by tapping into what's holy shit about you. Now, you can't see it from here because your mind only understands your past story. So we have to kill the past story by just loving it, by undoing it. Because the biggest vision that you can see for yourself this year is nothing compared to what you could actually do. The biggest thing, you could come up with the greatest car and $10 million or a billion dollars. But remember, you're just this moment. That's it. And just this moment can change. And the biggest thing you can see for yourself right now includes your past stories, limitations, and beliefs about yourself. Notice how much more you can see it about other people that you know and not you because you're not carrying their emotional baggage. There's a you here right now. And if you're just this moment, then you, me, Obama, Trump, Oprah, a homeless guy, Warren Buffett, whatever, are all the same thing. Infinite potential, just heart and lungs, no old story baggage. You don't need to make it happen. You need to let go of what you weren't and much more will happen. And you won't care when it happens because your happiness is connected to you, not that you got the car or the millions of dollars or that you got the right relationship. Your relationship should be a byproduct of your connection to you. If you need a relationship to be happy, you will actually only be able to find someone else who needs a relationship to be happy. And then you'll both be addicts that'll stop yourselves from connecting to you. If you don't need a relationship and you're totally cool with connecting to yourself, period, you'll find someone else who also doesn't need a relationship but it would expand them to be in one with you and they'll expand you. You don't want a relationship to be just this thing where we go get ice cream and just get connected. And then you want someone who'll take you beyond you. You want someone who'll take you to God, to your universal place, to power. You want to be only surrounded by people that will take you beyond what you can see. Stop surrounding yourself with people that complain about shit all day. Stop surrounding yourself with people who are looking to stay in their old story by finding everything that's wrong with everything while they're infinite creatures. Stop finding people that are acorns dying to stay the most popular of the acorns when you're actually a forest. An acorn's a forest. And what's it have to do to become a forest? Nothing. It has to stop screwing around. What's a butterfly have to do? How would a caterpillar have to do to become a butterfly? Nothing. What did Nelson Mandela have to do to become the president? Sit for 27 years in prison. And then all of a sudden power came out because you have that in you. And it's not measured by how your mind can see it. It's by a feeling. If you could see it, then it wouldn't be faith. You get what I'm saying? If you can see the big vision for yourself, then it's way too small. You're not co-creating from a place of faith. You're co-creating from what's the whole vision. Ask yourself what your next step is today. I'm going to ask you point blank. What's a next step that you need to do today? What, what's that? Be here. Awesome. And what's, is there anything you need to let go of? Anything you need to say yes to? Anyone you need to forgive? Not for you're forgiving because you're okay with what they did, but because you are infinite power and you need to untie yourself from reliving the story over and over again. Is there anything like that that you can forgive, expand? I want, if you guys, I see people writing down or texting, but whatever it is, write down what your next step is. Not what the whole vision is, but what's today's next step? What do you need to let go of? Who do you need to say yes to? Who do you need to say no to? Many people get to where they are because they say yes to a lot of things. And many people get to where they are because they say no to a lot of things that don't align with them. 
And whichever one you are, it's time to do the opposite a little bit more. Do you get what I'm saying there? A lot of people say yes to a lot of things and they create a lot of businesses and stuff, but they also say yes to things that don't align with them. And often they have a big fear of missing out. And that fear of missing out sometimes stops them because they don't have a fear of missing in. You should get a fear of missing in. If I go to that party, I won't be able to meditate that day. I won't be able to create something unless that party expands you and takes you beyond yourself. If you've said no a lot, you might be living in your cave and not going to any event, but you're creating book after book and doing these introverted things. That's awesome. Sometimes there can be some power in saying yes to a couple more things just because you have been maybe shutting yourself off from really amazing opportunities too. So if you've been a yes person your whole life, say no to a few more things that don't align with you and you won't believe how fast things move. That's your growth. If you said no to a lot of things, say yes to a few more things. I probably the no people aren't here, <laughs> but <laughs> I just realized they're at home with their dog. So what time is it? I want to do a thing with you guys. It's crazy. What time is it? 1250. Can I do an exercise with you guys? Can I do an exercise with you? Really? Because I don't want you, this stuff I'm saying feels good intellectually and that's big. You guys are feeling good and excited. I'm feeling good and excited. But that's the same as going to a gym and having someone explain to you how a treadmill works. And you get all excited about the explanation of the treadmill. And then you go home and you tell everyone about the treadmill. On Sundays, you sing songs about the treadmill. (laughs) But there's a difference between understanding the treadmill and getting on it. And most people live in a way where they talk about the treadmill and they say they understand the treadmill and they don't understand the feeling going on inside of you is also a sign. People say everything's a sign outside, but they don't understand that calling inside you also is a sign and it will be there until you listen to it. I had a woman come up to me recently and she goes, I really want to divorce my husband, but I'm looking for a sign. I said, the fact you want to divorce him is a sign. Don't wait till you drive by Divorce Your Husband Avenue. Like, (laughs) and even when you do that, you'll ignore that and say that's not the sign. You'll make that fit your reason why you don't do the thing. That's what people really do with signs. They use signs often as an excuse for not listening to their heart. They actually create and make false signs or blame other things. This is a great, great venue. So, um... (laughs) Uh, The Screaming Murder Booth is open now, if you guys want. They're going to be doing that in a few minutes. So, (laughs) testicle electrocution just opened up. If you guys are ready for that, get get them out. Um, (laughs) Everything is a sign, especially what's going on inside. Everything inside is a sign. That is so big, because we love to give credit to everything else outside of us. We love to make, we love to blame invisible things when we used to blame things we could see. The more conscious you get, the more invisible the stuff gets that you think is why you can't do something. It used to be that someone cut you off. Now it's mercury retrograde. Like, I can't tell you many people, like, I don't have an ink in my pen. I must be mercury retrograde. It's because the planet's not doing what I decided it should be doing. Maybe it's just doing its thing. Why do we call it? It's out of alignment. It's what it's doing. It's in alignment. <laughs> right? Ah, oh, that's why I, oh, the headset doesn't work. Mercury retrograde. I'm a victim. I'm a total victim to everything in the world. I didn't have my lucky crystal. You're God. You're infinite. You're the universe. You created Mercury retrograde. You'll probably figure that out when you die. Oh, I made that shit. There's an egoic story that believes all these things are limitations. I went to an event once. They were selling rocks that said gratitude and abundance on them. And they were selling them for $700. And I realized those words are on those rocks because that's what the seller feels when you buy it. (laughs) Gratitude and abundance because you bought a rock. Do you know you could go to the beach and pick up rocks? They're free. You know that feeling that you're trying to get from the car? You can feel it now. It's free. 
That feeling you're trying to get is free. All the things you want to get are free right now. Nature is free. It's free. What are we trying to do? Why are we trying to impress people that aren't connected to that anyway? You know? So really quick, check this out. I want to give you guys an exercise that is really mind-blowing. And um, it's crazy. And it's actually something that we do at my events that absolutely changed our life. And I want to invite you, by the way, to please come see me at the Dolby Theater. That is a two-day event with 3,400 wide-open people. And if you want to come, I'll give you a coupon code, by the way, for real, to get $100 off because our team has decided to make everything massively cheap. Not because it's cheap, it's valuable, it's more valuable than anything, but because we don't want to make it hard for people that want to change to come to it. And I think that when people make prices through the roof, they're trying to make it hard, and then they end up with a following of like 20 millionaires, but I want to change the planet. So if you want to come to that, you can get tickets for a two-day event as low as $100 that just covers our price of the theater because I want to do this all day. As you can see, it keeps coming out, and I'm dying to do it. So if you go on to Ticketmaster, you'll see my event. My name's Kyle Cease. You can get um, the coupon that you'll put in the offer code. It's called Next Level, and you can get any ticket that's available for $100 less and the tickets were $200, so they're 100 bucks for two days that will change every direction of your life. But I want to give you one of the exercises that we do at the event. So remember that code, next level. Go into Ticketmaster and get it, if they're even there still, but get it, because it's going to be crazy. Here's the exercise. I was on my way to an audition once eight years ago an audition for a movie. I used to be an actor. I did 10 Things I Hate About You and Not Another Teen Movie. And I was Bogey Lowenstein, the kid who threw the party and 10 Things and the clapping guy and Not Another Teen Movie and all these different things. And I had a huge Comedy Central career. And one day I was on my way to an audition and I decided to talk about the audition coming up because I was in my head and I was scared I would screw it up. So I decided to talk about the audition coming up as if it was past tense and it already happened. So on my way to the audition, I looked at my friend and I said, do you remember when we went in there and we just killed it? I said, dude, I was so funny. I was so in the pocket. I don't know what happened, but I was so in the zone and it was amazing. And then I started saying, they couldn't believe it. They thought it was unbelievable. And then he started going, I do remember it. It was amazing. You were so funny. You went in there. He goes, you totally booked the part and it was the best audition you ever had. On the way to the audition, our minds need to be creative. And if we don't create, they will creatively sabotage you. If you have sabotaging thoughts, that's because you're brilliant and your mind's bored with the shitty mundane life you're living. So it's trying to sabotage it so that you'll do something holy shit amazing. Are you with me? I'm swearing more. This is the late show now. <laughs> late here is one o'clock. So on my way to the audition, we did that. And then I went into the audition. And so I had just created a whole new outcome that was bigger. And when I went in there, I was on fire and my mind was full of creativity versus sabotage and fear, right? So when I went into the audition, I just totally nailed it. Then my friend and I on the way home decided to talk about what we did the rest of the day as if that already happened. <laughs> So I said, dude, I remember when we got home and we called that person and then we worked out and then we got all those other things done. And he goes, me too. And all of a sudden we got to feel the feeling of it being done. Are you with me? And all of a sudden we wanted to do it. The next day I woke up and talked about the day coming up as if it was yesterday. So I said, I don't know what happened, but I surprised my girl with flowers and then I took her to Disneyland and then I felt that and I totally did it. So what if this venue we're at right now, we pretended was a year ago. And when you left here, you did some really crazy things. And I started saying, I remember this audience. I remember the funny plane hanger audience that let me riff with them and be with them. And they totally were fine that I was a few minutes late. I'm sorry. And so I remember this audience being so fun. And then after that event, we did the Dolby Theater and it was amazing. And I kept getting healthier and I had the most amazing connection with my fiance. It was nuts. I also had just recently made a deal with Hay House. So I have a new book coming with Hay House and I'm going to talk about that. Thank you. That's really true. And I'm going to talk about that as if that happened and that's done, right? So the book came out and it was a number one. It was my second New York Times bestseller. And I don't know what happened, but immediately my mind is working like Google and it's trying to figure out the fastest way 
to make that happen. So the second I go, it was a bestseller, my mind is like, how? What did we do? Ba 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 ba. Are you with me? So you have that too. Most of us don't talk about what we want. We talk about why life sucks, and then our mind goes, let's prove it. And then it goes you all the evidence of why it sucks. So you'll be with your friend, I had the worst day ever. And your mind's like, yeah, someone cut us off earlier. No, someone cut me off earlier. And then I get to work and there's no ink in the pen. I'm like, meh, 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 meh. That's how we, and your mind is trying to find proof of why it sucks versus why you became the next, whatever your version is of Oprah or Eckhart or Michael Jackson or whatever. So my question is, and is it okay that I have a few extra minutes? Is this okay? My question is, are you willing to get in the treadmill and be totally willing to screw this up? Be totally willing to do it wrong. Be willing to fall flat on your face and give this a shot. Are you guys with me? Are you with me, ladies and gentlemen, actually do this? Okay, here's what I want you to do. This is where you have to go out of your comfort zone for a minute to actually get you free. Here's what you're gonna do. You are in a second are going to do something and then give me your attention right after it. What I want you to do is find someone in this room that you do not know and then give me your attention in the next 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Okay, here's what you're going to do. For a few minutes, the A's are going to look at the B's and talk about your life for a few minutes, I'll time it, and then in a few minutes, I'm going to yell switch. But for a few minutes, you're going to talk about your life as if this event was a month ago, okay? So it's a month later, and I want you to think of the impact, the income that you have, your health, your relationship status, your connection, as if there's no rules, and I want you to figure out how to get there. So you're going to look at your partner and be like... After the expo, I went home and I did all this extra work and I connected to myself. I let go of these things that were heavy. I felt, and you are going to ad lib it. And the first seconds always suck because your mind is fighting everything. So you're going to just let this start and then let it keep going. And whatever comes up, I want you to say it. And your mind will start to figure out a faster route to a totally different life. And then I'm going to yell switch. And by the way, B's, When the A's are doing this, if they get stumped, if they say anything like, I don't understand what I'm doing, I'm blocked, I don't know what I'm doing, the B's have to look at you and go, and, and then you have to go, and I love that. (laughs) Because your problem is the resistance to being blocked, not the blocking itself, right? So you got to love that situation and it'll make room for more to come through. So the A's are going to talk about their life and how they are changing the world or how their health is better or whatever it is. And then I'm going to yell switch and the B's are going to do the same thing. You guys got it? Just a few minutes each. Let yourself go crazy. The more you put into this, the more you're going to get. I promise you a massive shift for almost everyone in here. There'll be two people that won't. They'll go, I didn't get anything. But everyone else will love it. So here we go. Ready? A's go first. Talk about your new life as if it's now. Ready, set, go. Having promoted more than 600 speakers and more than 65,000 people attend my seminars and courses and workshops and expos, having read so many books and attended so many courses, I really realized that the basics of personal professional growth is based on the power of the question, asking yourself empowering questions. Read my new book, The Question, Find Your True Purpose. It's based on my work, 30 years of entrepreneurship, all the experiences that I have, my manifesto, and what's really important. So for more information, go to www.thequestion.co. All right, time, everybody. Give your partner a round of applause. (laughs) That took courage to go beyond yourself. Who got something out of that? You just did. Wow, look at that. You guys realize you just did four minutes? That's it. You just changed your paradigm in four minutes. The length of a crappy song at the gym. You just did it. How do you feel right now, you guys? You're creating. You're infinite creative beings. I need you to take in how huge that is. You are infinite creative beings. You are here to not learn just from other people, but to learn from you and go beyond your story of what you thought you were. You did that in four freaking minutes. What would happen if you did that for two hours a day? Do you get what I'm saying? My team and I, we took a break recently because we did some other stuff, but my team and I started doing an hour a day every morning of this. Our company is skyrocketing right now. 
Everything's changing because when you do this, you start to set the precedence for your whole day, the whole everything. You're your whole day. Imagine doing that for an hour a day. Do you think that that wouldn't add up to be worth way more than a job that you don't like to be at is paying you, even if it was paying you $5,000 an hour? Do you not understand how valuable that thing is? That was accessed by you, and that's what you have. And the only thing I'm here to do is help people get that you are it, not me. I am for me. You are for you. And I want you to take in this whole weekend the idea that you can teach yourself, you can co-create, and work with people that want you to see that you're amazing. Because you are infinite, and I love you guys. I am honored to be with you. I'm Kyle Cease. Thank you so much, you guys. It was an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.